I actually left the military back in August. I actually left July 31st and started working at Discovery Communications on August 1st. Uh, my last duty assignment was at RCENT, uh, but before that, I, I used to be a field artillery officer. I left as a major. The Discovery is in over 220 some odd countries and territory. We're all over the world. Um, but majority of, of, of the job, and it all depends on what job you're looking for. What I would recommend is you looking at our website that says career, um, click on that link, and then you're going to see a plethora of jobs from Washington, D.C., or excuse me, from Silver Spring, Maryland, which is where our headquarters is at, all the way, we're headquartered in Silver Spring. We used to be in Bethesda, but we moved uh, several years ago to in a huge building in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. I mean, they love when an insider is bringing uh, potential applicants. Trust. Exactly, to them, because an HR person, that kind of like alleviate them going through like thousands of applications at once. You know, for, for instance, with, with, my, with my deal, I was able to beat out over 200 people that was actually applying for the same job that I was applying for. And I was, honestly, I didn't think I had a, a, a run in the game with 200 people. I'm like, there's no way, you know, with my only experience with being in the military. So it can happen. And if you're really serious about it, I would recommend you guys just taking a look at our web website. Give me a contact, give me a call, and I'd be more than happy to assist in any way I can. Well, again, through network, the LinkedIn part was, someone told me, hey, did you know that LinkedIn will give you a year uh, premium membership as a vet? I was like, no, I didn't know that. So I contacted a, a person through LinkedIn who's the manager at LinkedIn that deals with the vets. And she wanted to, all she, it was so easy. All she asked was, when were you in the military? How long have you been in the military? When did you get out? And then next thing you know, I received full access for a whole year within LinkedIn. How did I get considered? I made sure that I had more than one person look at my resume and a translation from, mine was a little bit easier to translate because I know I was field artillery but then I moved over to public affairs. So public affairs is basically PR and marketing. So it was a little bit easier to trans translate, but I did have some field artillery stuff still on my resume. So for example, when I was a commander in field artillery, you know, a commander is technically a director. So, you know, that's how you would have to translate it and making sure that it, it speak to the language that the civilian would be able to understand. Because all you need is that resume to get you in the door, and then I, I have trust and confidence that everyone can sell themselves. But I'm sure that there is possibility, because like I said, Discovery does, what's that? I said I'm getting my business card out. Uh, I, the reason why I say that is because we are starting to partner a lot more with veteran organizations. We'd be interested in learning where we could get that information. Yeah, I, can, I definitely can be able to um, find out on the inside who that would be that will be able to communicate all that because I know a lot of things you said you do a lot of IT and so on which <laughs> IT is huge in discovery <laughs> I mean I'm, I have like two cell phones right now and I'm trying to figure out how to do video downloading so I can watch this presentation from the CEO right now before I get asked a whole bunch of questions so but yeah that's it's, it's a huge deal and I'm sure you you're aware of that especially with situations that's happening right now with Sony and everything like that. So. I did. I, I found it on LinkedIn after after my network told me, hey, check this out. And then I just literally typed in, okay, I definitely kn I know I want to go through discovery and I know I want to do communications. And I, I pulled it up and there it was, it was sitting there and had the actual hiring manager and had the actual person who I would be working for and their email contact. So I literally, you know, it was it, it was literally a, a shot in the dark and I said okay I'm just gonna email and see if they're gonna respond back to me I emailed back gave them a full kind of detail of what it is that I, I do and if you're interested please give me a contact the the big thing is being persistent and I was being persistent and she loved the fact that I literally took it upon myself to actually contact her she's like I didn't think this thing worked but I definitely <laughs> would want to uh, ask you 
And Discovery uses LinkedIn a lot in finding their their employees. Yeah. Uh, uh, for some of the folks that, have, since you just transitioned, and I, I mean I transitioned six and a half years ago or six whatever. Mm -hmm. What's the hardest part for you of working now in private industry from when you were in the military? Because the military is just accomplish the mission, but mm -hmm. in the private sector, you have other yeah. factors you have to be aware of. Uh, can you elaborate on what's been the That's a great to... question, because I'm dealing with it right now. And actually, the corporate sector, and I, maybe it's just the communication side of the house, it's really not any different than the military, and only in this aspect, meaning everyone works as a team at least in discovery. There's a lot of camaraderie, hey, let's all get together, let's do this, and let's do it well. And if you don't understand something or know something, there's someone there that's always going to be there to make sure that you don't fail, kind of thing. At least that's in my experience. Now, on the side of me coming straight out of the military and dealing with other civilians, that may not understand or know about the military because there are a lot of those within discovery and there's nothing wrong with that it's just that you got to educate them um, and I could I could see the, the difference like I don't try to stay late just to stay late I do know like folks sometimes will once it says a certain time and that's it I'm gone it's, it's just human nature for us to be able to just like oh I'm gonna just kind of do this until um, uh, I need to get the mission done kind of thing and so on. So there is a difference when it comes to, I would say, the discipline um, side of the house versus, you know, because ours is a little bit more stringent. Do you feel outdated in a time, different time zone from the 20 year old? That's a great question, but I didn't because I was actually doing a whole bunch of- You are? The, the, so you felt pretty comfortable? I did, I did. Only thing that I could say that I can, and I don't know if there's any Y2K, because I'm Generation X, but I don't know if there's any Y2K folks here. Um, the only thing that I, I could say that I probably feel a little bit old on is how well the Y2K generation is able to do the social media. And it's, it, it's a huge deal, and right now it's a huge deal because a lot of things right now in the, in the media world is talking about we wanting to stream. Most people, a lot of people nowadays are not sitting in the front of the TV anymore watching TV. There's a lot of Netflix. There's a lot of streaming, you know, Orange is the New Black and all this other stuff. So you can tell that's all from, you know, the younger generation and, and figuring out where does that go nowadays. So I definitely, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't that far behind.